Enterprise Stories is the weekly radio program that shares the experiences of successful Nigerian entrepreneurs and provides expert analysis of their success factors. Enterprise Stories, business stories of success. Welcome listeners to Enterprise Stories. My name is Olawale Anifoshi, your host. In this episode, we will expose you to managing your sales force in the teaching segment and in our story of the day segment, we will share a story of a lady doing real estate with a difference. But before we start, we'll take a quick message from our sponsors. <laughs> when you are successful in your small business, as I am, people will always come to you. They want to know what you're doing differently, who your bankers are, and what kind of deals you are getting from them. <laughs> well, I'm happy to enjoy all the benefits of the SME0COT account from Stambik IBTC Bank. <laughs> My profit is up. But why? Because I get a zero COT, unlimited turnover, no limit on check lodgement or withdrawals, free internet and telephone banking as well as discount on training courses for small business owners <laughs> with special benefits like that on the SME Zero COT account from Stambik IBTC Bank. Now, there is no reason why your business won't to boom just like mine. <laughs> Stambik IBTC Bank, moving forward. Good day listeners. Today, our topic for discussion will be managing your sales force. On previous episodes of this program, we have talked about the importance of sales and selling and that basically, if you have nothing to sell, then you have no cash flow and you don't have a business in the first place. And everybody is actually in the business of selling. You're either selling the service or selling goods or selling yourself, even when it comes to politician, as the case may be. And basically, the most important um, commercial activity you carry out in our lifetime is the act of selling. Many people get very wary when it comes to the habit of selling or carrying out sales of course basically because of the issue of rejection but today we will be talking about how to manage your sales force these are a group of people that basically do the job of bringing in the revenue that keeps the organization running and it is important that we manage this vital arm of every organization most organizations find it difficult understanding how salesmen reason how salesmen act how to keep salesmen motivated. But it is important that managers and leaders and owners of businesses that we understand salesmen and what really drives them. Most salespeople, while they prefer to act independent, also look to management for some type of leadership, guidance, and advice, and most times, actually in all times, some motivation. Therefore, as business leaders, we must be sure that we give this to our sales team for them to be able to deliver their job effectively. If you do not manage your sales staff very well, it will soon begin to reflect in your bottom line. Therefore, in what ways or how exactly can we manage our sales team to get the optimum result and delivery from them? One, we need to sell clearly defined goals and plan for our sales team. Most people are in the habit, especially for small businesses, of just getting one or two people that walk into your premise to say they're looking for a job, give them products and catalog to sell, and just tell them to go out there and make a sale. They need to be properly equipped. Like a popular book says, if the axe is not sharpened, then you waste so much energy. So what we need to do is to ensure as business owners that we have clearly set objectives and goals for our salesmen. Despite their desire to be, I mean, working under minimal supervision, it is proper that you give them a proper route plan, a proper coverage strategy, and a proper goal that they need to achieve, broken down into daily sales objectives, weekly sales objectives, monthly and annual plan, if need be, just so that they have a clear direction of what they need to do. And we also should be able to help them with proper planning. How do they plan their day? How do they plan their itinerary? How do they even plan their sales calls? When you come in to a place and you meet an objection, how exactly will this be done? These are tools that it's very important that you offer your salespeople before you send them into the battlefield of sales. The other thing we also need to take very good cognizance of is the need to always encourage them to keep good sales record. In my experience um, in the last few years in the areas of sales and marketing, I've seen that quite a lot of times most salesmen do not have very good record of what they do. Record in terms of how many sales you achieve, how many contacts you've made, how many contacts were converted, what is your sales rate, what is your strike rate. All these records are vital for the salesman 
first and foremost to track their performance if you have a salesman that's been with you for a year or two years you should be able to see is there progress what's the progression in terms of their delivery in terms of their conversion rate this is crucial most salesmen also even do not keep good records of where they made sales in time past you should be able to see what are the key customers what are they delivering what is the sales or the buying habits of your either your salesman or a few of the customers or clients that your salespeople have been servicing ability for management to even just look at these records from time to time gives you an indication of how well your business is doing or what variants of your product seem to be doing well and where which which customers and from these management is even able to gather a lot of consumer insight or consumer understanding as case may be most salesmen hate to keep records they hate to also do a lot of writing and documentation they think sales is all about just selling 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 but like someone popularly says if you fail to plan then you have planned to fail thirdly you need to be able to shower your salespeople with a lot of attention I'm, I'm sure quite a number of us are smiling attention yes salespeople by nature by temperament tend to always feel left uh, to exposed to the heat they believe they're doing so much for the organization while the other part of people sit in the cool of the ac and just ask them how much have you done how much have you brought in so there's a need to pamper this set of people how do we do it in a very formal environment one of them is we need to constantly organize regular training for our salespeople. you need to talk to them you need to teach them you need to equip them to be able to do their job it's a way in which salespeople feel wanted and feel celebrated once in a while as, as often as the business or the budget of the business can afford to make sure your salesmen are regularly trained they are your assets they are part of your corporate assets and most times they give the competitive edge that competition cannot easily copy or easily borrow secondly you also need to have a very creative incentive scheme and of course, this serves as a motivational tool for your salesmen to deliver. If you have salesmen that are getting very blanket uh, pay, you it, it serves as a disincentive or a demotivation for those who are able to deliver better than others that are just still trying to find their footing. And thirdly, also ensure that you hold regular sales meetings just so that you can interact, make it fun, make them know that their contribution, um, of course, is valued when you have this sales meeting and let them know that you know each one of them by name and you value what they are doing. And of course, you also need to let them understand the fact that their views count. Most times they want to act like people telling you about strategy and all that. They seem to choose to want to know you by the nature of their temperament. Listen to them and let them understand the fact that their values and their views count. And of course, finally on this case, ensure your salespeople are a right fit. In terms of temperament, in terms of outlook, you need to ensure that you don't have somebody who is extremely timid or extremely shy leading your salespeople. You must be sure that by all disposition, behavioral competencies and characters and, and, and of course outlook, that your salespeople are a perfect fit. Then and then, are you set as an organization to begin to win the battle um, at the marketplace? Thank you. <laughs> when you are successful in your small business as I am, people will always come to you. They want to know what you're doing differently, who your bankers are, and what kind of deals you are getting from them. <laughs> well, I'm happy to enjoy all the benefits of the SME Zero COT account from Stambik IBTC Bank. <laughs> My profit is up. But why? Because I get zero COT, unlimited turnover, no limit on check lodgement or withdrawals, free internet and telephone banking as well as discount on training courses for small business owners <laughs> with special benefits like that on the SME Zero COT account from Stambik IBTC Bank. Now, there is no reason why your business won't boom just like mine. <laughs> Stambik IBTC Bank, moving forward. Welcome to the story of the day segment and in studio with us today is Ruth Obi, the CEO of 3Invest Limited. Ruth, welcome to Enterprise Stories. Thank you for having me, Wale. Okay, so Ruth, tell us, how did you venture, how did you start 3Invest Limited? Well, I started 3Invest Limited as a young girl who wanted to make money. So that's the story of 3Invest. That's how I started. The, the story now is different. Okay. Now, that different story uh, is what we would like and I'm sure right. that people listening to you would like to, to hear about. Um, before 3 invest, what were you doing? And at what point did 3 invest um, come to life? Okay, uh, well, I'm a trained lawyer, and um, part of when I went to do more of the training to become a, you know, a better lawyer, I caught a bug for real estate, and um, I decided to start the business of real estate. So basically, I started real estate consulting, which is just selling and buying real estate for people and making commission of it. 
so that's what we were doing when it started but right now we are more into going into real estate investments and um, in the industry we are the leading technology driven real estate industry in terms of advocacy uh, we have um, we have three segments of um, our services which is advisory brokerage and advocacy another on the advocacy platform is more like having a, a three invest intelligence which is a media for real estate industry so we have a real estate on air which is the first syndicated real estate radio show in nigeria we have the three invest online which is um the premier real estate in information portal where you can go and get information about anything you want in in real estate then now uh, we have um we have we host a series of events we had um, the to premiere the real estate awards last year, which I believe we, um, EDC was part of it last year as well. And uh, we're just about next week we're launching the Property Buyers Forum. It's an investment, it's a marketplace for buyers and sellers. And at that event, we're going to be launching a, a loyalty program and mm. an investment club. Yeah. That's how hands food to invest. Now, is. I mean, you said so much. <laughs> I, I mean, you've talked about real estate on air. You've talked about real estate online. The three invest online. You've even talked about the the um, awards ceremony, and we know that all this thing happened just like that. Yeah. Now, what I would like you to share with um, our listening audience is how and in what stages did these things come to you, and why exactly are you doing all this um, in the way you are to position three invest. Uh, well, we uh, we in the industry, I think first of all in business, you have to try and. Um, sustain yourself so that you will be relevant in any circumstance in any industry whether good or bad in 2009 when i went back to edc to do my certificate in entrepreneur management where i learned how to do business whether in good or bad times so after that i we thought back okay are we going to still keep doing business to sell properties for people what are we going to do different in the industry that's what gave birth to the advocacy platform so that platform was actually the mission was to First of all, try to empower the average um, consumer to make wise investment decisions in, in terms of um, knowing how what to do in the real estate industry so that you don't have to be the dumb person who doesn't really know just if someone tells you to buy, you buy, someone tells you to sell. So, but we, we're out actually out there to provide those, you know, um, preliminary information that people need to form just, you know, basic information. To make good decisions. Yeah. So yes. basically that's um, what we started doing with advocacy and also sticking to our brokerage service in a different way. So Okay. So what then led you to come on air to talk about um, real estate? And how did that idea come to you? Okay. Um, well, um, I thought, we, you know, in doing business in Nigeria, in this environment, there's so many challenges that you face. One of it is probably not being able to have finance, the kind of finance you would have. So being careful and being knowing that bank is not the best place to talk to and also not having the capacity that I need at the time. I thought I could build capacity by trying to build the brand. So in building the brand, I also thought if I went to talk, branding, to talk to a branding firm to, to build my brand is going to cost me so much as a small company I didn't have that so I started to build capacity for us and now what I thought was okay most of the things that we do we can do it in-house so all the platforms that we've listed like right from radio online and everything so we we'll put three mess in all these platforms and that gave us exposure in all the um, parts of what we wanted relevant places we wanted to play in the in the market so like the radio is just for the masses so the brand is big and everyone hears it every day on the radio so then the online is goes goes viral that gives us a lot of um, foreign attraction into the company people talk to us when they come to want to come into nigeria to do any real estate transaction um that has made the the brand strong globally and um, we also have the events because with events it gives you capacity you're able to talk to anybody in the industry so we focused on building the brand so now we've got the brand we're now ready to make money uh, okay uh three invest is about five years old now yeah we're okay. going to the, we're um, in the sixth year in the sixth year now in in the six years of, of running three invest how has funding been for you and have you had any at any point in time had to go to the financial institutions to get money to either set up or or to do any of the um, programs or uh, investments that you've, you've had 
Okay, um, personally, I have um, some personal um, issues about talking to the bank. From experience, my dad did not have a very perfect um, relationship with banks in terms of when you take a loan and you want to repay, you don't have the money to repay and the interest loan and it, it takes. So I had a very you know young background of knowing a lot about bank banking. So I didn't, I've not been in the business of trying to. So basically, what we do because we know is a is a business that brings in income. The money comes in and we use it to spend and run the business. So that's what we do. So for every platform we have, somehow somehow has a business model that brings in money, but it's not really really like that um, straightforward and it's not really like that smooth. So there has been instance instances where we would require money, but that's why we keep making ourselves um, putting things that would give the money, um, give the company, in, bring income into the company apart from also um, letting or selling or, or yes. all those kind of stuff. I, I know you, yeah. you leverage extensively on partnerships right, and sure. you've been able to um, make yourself a good attractive bride for uh, other organizations or partners. So can you share with us some of the things that you've been able to do to attract uh, partners? Uh, I think um, we, we, in us in 3Invest, we feel like we're one or two, even in prayers, when one or two are gathered together, you know, things happen faster than when it's just one person trying to do. We believe in partnership, we believe in syndication, integrating with people. So we know that uh, most of the things we want to do, we might not be able to afford to do it. And when you have capacity, like I can talk to EDC to do anything because I obviously have something that EDC needs. So it's, it's about having capacity. So if you don't have it, maybe well, a year or when we started first or two, we didn't have it. We were just a brand selling property. So that wasn't different. But right now, anybody I want to talk to, if I go to bank, I have something they need. If I go to an oil company, I have something they need. So it's easy for me to partner with people. So that's having placed the brand in such a way that it's very, very sustainable and it, it works for you and not against you. So that's basically what we've done. Okay. On a concluding note, um, before we round up, the real estate business in, in Nigeria today, especially in Lagos, as mm -hmm. we know it, it's very big and there's so many people playing in it. Uh, but you've been able to carve a niche for yourself. Right. Um, w what would you be telling people that are thinking of venturing into this kind of business? Okay, like business, people who want to go into the real estate. Yeah, it's a very low entry barrier for real estate because, I mean, you can either start selling or building houses and you make money. But it depends on what you want to do in terms of um, trying to change um, or bring a revolution in the industry. It's not a very, very easy place to um, to trade in in terms of um, the there are lots of challenges, land tight lane, lack of finance sector, housing finance sector in the industry. Um, a lot of um, regulatory and polity problems that we have in the industry. So these are things that might not be easy for you, assuming you want to go into fully into investment or infrastructural development. So that these are things you look at, even as a developer, to even do your land um, papers and everything. There are so much challenges. You either probably end up using the money to. Um, to do your um, conveyancing and trying to perfect the title and everything. So it's so hard to trade in industry. So that's what 3Invest, people like 3Invest or us in 3Invest. So we're trying to bring a revolution. We're doing things that bring attraction in the industry. We're making, we're pumping people's blood to make sure that they know that, you know what, we need to get this industry moving. So I think right about after I launched my radio show, I had a few radio shows um, down the line. I'm hearing their information centers on real estate. I'm hearing there's this institution or that. So, and I'm just happy that 3Invest is helping people jump on their faces, be like, oh, okay, we need to get this done. So when I see people do that, it's, they don't come, they, it's not a challenge or I just take it that oh yes the industry is responding so I don't take it like okay these are my rivals or anything I'm just glad that people are really understanding that these are things that they're supposed to do okay so. thank you very much Ruth right. for coming on Enterprise Stories listeners you've heard it we've been talking to Ruth Obi the CEO of 3Invest uh, she's worked extensively on building a brand to be able to make herself attractive and to keep our business sustainable we'll be right back after the short break <laughs> when you are successful in your small business, as I am, people will always come to you. They want to know what you're doing differently, who 
your bankers are and what kind of deals you are getting from them. <laughs> well, I'm happy to enjoy all the benefits of the SME Zero COT account from Stambik IBTC Bank. <laughs> My profit is up. But why? Because I get a zero COT, unlimited turnover, no limit on check lodgement or withdrawals, free internet and telephone banking, as well as discount on training courses for small business owners <laughs> with special benefits like that on the SME Zero COT account from Stambik IBTC Bank. Now, there is no reason why your business won't boom just like mine. <laughs> Stambik IBTC Bank, moving forward. Victor, you heard the story of the day with Ruth Obi. What's your take? Wow, that was a very incisive piece from Ruth Obi, the MD and CEO of 3Invest Limited. And basically, I like the fact that she was very frank about it. Why are we in business? We're in business for the bottom line, and the bottom line is cash flow, making profit and ensuring the funds come in to run the overhead. However, how was she able to do this in the few five years that she's been in business? She did and practicalized a few of the teachings we had talked about earlier on in this program. The first is the fact that she was playing in an industry which was a service industry and in an industry which there was a lot of clutter and where there was easy commoditization of the services, that is real estate. It's more like a commodity business. It goes to either the lowest bidder or nothing so professional. In actual fact, a lot of people see the real estate sector as an all-commerce affair. And so what did she do? One of the strategies she implemented is what we had always talked about, which is the sunflower strategy. She differentiated herself. And this works whether you're in the service industry or you are dealing with tangible goods or offering. Sunflower strategy is your ability to understand the core of your business, in this case, real estate, either you're letting or you're selling, and then develop other offerings around it. In this case, she talked about the online, she talked about the radio program she was doing, she talked about the event, she talked about the advocacy, and these are the petals of the core in terms of um, Sunflower strategy. And that is what has given her the differentiation. If you cannot differentiate yourself, then you cannot command the attention of the people and you cannot be rewarded with the cash flow that you need. So going, just taking us back again, whether you find yourself in a pure water business or you find yourself in a salon business, all you need to do to see to differentiate yourself from the pack is to implement your song flower strategy. A sunflower has a core and has petals. The petals are your differentiating services from every other person. It could be your packaging style. It could be your customer service. It could be your route to market. It could be your off product offerings. It could be even the way you respond to your people. Just make sure that you sit and analytically differentiate yourself from everybody that is playing around you. However, the caveat, like I mentioned in previous episodes, make sure your differentiation or whatsoever is the differential offering that you are offering to your consumers, they can and are willing to pay for it and they recognize that differentiation. She did it beautifully well in the real industry and I think it's a lot of kudos to her. What else did she do? She mentioned the fact that she needed to build a brand. There is power in brand. The equity of a brand at times can be so strong that it's even stronger than the company and once you have a powerful brand, it has the ability to attract resources. It has the ability to attract the right kind of partners. It has the ability to attract the right kind of interest from the people you are targeting. And this was what she did. She built uh, she, she, she made effort to build her brand and by doing that we see that now she says yes there are more people seeking interest with her there are more people who are interested in what she's doing there are more people willing to go into partnership with her she took all the platforms you don't need to go to the top um, marketing school to understand the concept of branding is to know what you want to do in terms of a brand how to put it in the face and in the front of your uh, prospective clients or consumers and how to see them as a differential offering somebody who has not been following this series will wonder what exactly is a brand a brand is the totality of the experience that a prospective client or consumer uh, comes into contact when they mention your product or offering or when they come in contact with you it's not just about your logos and your payoffs it's the totality of the experience from how you react how you talk to them how your people are how the ambience of your office Every time there's an encounter with your brand or whatever stands for your brand or your business or your person, the feeling that your prospective client gets is what determines your brand. And this is what distinguishes you from 
any other person offering the same kind of goods or services that you are offering in the in the same industry and on a final note what did she do awareness 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 no matter what you do to turn your business into something that people come after and the right you attract the right cash flow you must be sure that people are aware of you you need to look at every platform and um, um, whether you're talking online or you're talking in terms of short advertising or publicity or PR make sure People are aware of you. Nobody patronizes what they do not know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor, for that fiery analysis of the story of the day. Listeners, you've heard it. Uh, there's no way you can be in business uh, without you letting people know. You have to create awareness for your business. You have to create awareness for your products and services in order for you to get patronage. Until next week, stay tuned to Enterprise Stories. Join the Enterprise Development Center of the Pan-African University as we celebrate 10 years of supporting small and growing businesses in Nigeria. Log on to www.edc.edu.ng for more information. For questions and comments, please email edc at pau.edu.ng or log on to Enterprise Stories on nigeria.sme2k.org for useful resources and articles to help grow your business.